Hi all, I have another very interesting and potentially instructive game to show you today. Ethereal 11.73 against Leela ID 61185. This is by DCAP, Fast and Furious 3 minute with 2 second increment time control. The start position given to both is in the Sicilian Sveshnikov. So we're looking to maybe learn from the neural networks how they play these types of positions. And in particular, I thought we should have a look again at C4, the old classic move, which Caruana uh, innovated against with A4. So the old classic move, okay, it uses the parking space C4. So there's no knight A3 to C4 later, as with A4. Uh, so if a4 was played knight a3 to c4 and then still a bind against b5 so what is the upside of this is it to really play the thematic c5 and what would happen if white gets that in in a timely way well this is an interesting uh, example game to show the c5 potential we have bishop e7 bishop d3 both sides castle a6 knight c3 f5 so yes it seems very natural to play f5 it doesn't seem overly weakening in this particular position black also has the majority of pawns on this side of the board it's as if the board has been split if we take the split like this we see that black has four pawns here against the three here and white conversely has the, the four there against the three here so the pawn majority on both sides of the board kind of maybe influences the play a little bit by both sides the strategic breaks especially for white it looks as though c5 is a dangerous for black potentially we have rook e1 knight d7 bishop e2 seems a bit of a time waste e4 bishop f4 now knight e5 so not worried about getting double pawns i think this is the first instructive moment if bishop takes e5 doubling the pawns i don't think this is a big deal even though it seems as though c5 might be even more impressive here for d6 that seems you know potentially huge black does have a resource here with bishop b4 uh, the point being in this position say here bishop d7 uh, to actually just in time play bishop takes a4 and bishop c5 and black is guaranteeing a beautiful bishop in the center and should have nothing to fear there so yes it seems as though this line with knight a4 is potentially uh, pretty dangerous uh, the bishop doesn't really want to leave and, and allow d6 and c5 so this is a key move to bear in mind uh, for the budding Sveshnikov player so queen b3 though was played not bishop takes we have knight g6, bishop e3, and now bishop f6 here. Interestingly, uh, bishop b6 was played. You might wonder why. Well, one issue is f4 could be quite dangerous. So the bishop gets out of the way with tempo. Uh, that's quite interesting. If c5, as an example, then f4. In fact, here, bishop f5 looks quite good for black. If that's <laughs> white's best move, that's not very convincing at all. That's just much better for and if c takes let's be more realistic bishop d4 can ignore this pawn it seems in this position and be adventurous going really for white's king with f3 battering through and it's super dangerous uh, the fragmentation here will cost white dearly uh, material will start to drop off etc after bishop h3 so yes it seems a tempo gain getting out of the way of f4 queen e7 and now c5 so what is the impact of this we really haven't explored this particular impact well we have bishop e5 the immediate thing tactically to avoid is d takes that runs into d6 check and the diagonal of death is really a diagonal of death here after bishop c4 winning the queen or queen f7 bishop c4 winning the queen so that's to be avoided so definitely don't play that bishop e5 is played g3 here uh, you might wonder well what about maybe c6 the point of g3 is to actually it seems to prevent knight f4 which is useful here so say c7 knight takes g2 becomes possible white's pieces on the queen side don't help the king so it's like they've gone an expedition over there away from home and in fact black uh, is like in another game we we saw yeah, free to be a piece down but with a winning attack 
because these pieces just have very little relevance to king safety so black seems to smash through in these variations and win material uh, so that's it seems as though g3 is an important move to stop knight f4 and that sort of sacrifice potentially on g2 uh, so we have king h8 getting out of the way of this diagonal means potentially that maybe you know d takes is is on the horizon now without any discovered check c6 is played uh, perhaps white should just forget about this whole c6 trying to create a pass pawn this this might be better for example this position it seems as though f4 bishop d7 it seems as though this might be what white should be content with it seems roughly equal uh, and here if e takes instead uh, this is also nothing as significant it seems both sides seem to have equal chances but with c6 yes this does create a major imbalance in the position is white's pawn here really uh, causing other problems we have actually b takes so you might wonder well doesn't this give the d5 square actually it starts a d5 fight after bishop e6 uh, the thing is here the queen goes to b4 there doesn't seem uh, much time uh, for knight d5 because of queen f7 and here knight e7 is actually much better for black uh, for example rook ad1 knight takes c6 simply that pawns a liability there and in this line if knight takes e7 bishop takes c4 and here just bishop e6 and this knight's trapped actually because black's won control of that d5 the knight's actually uh, trapped and, and coming off the board so yes so queen after this move queen b4 was played so it looks rather awkward and we have actually a very interesting move can you guess what Lila plays in this position which has some interesting uh, impact on things so five seconds guess the move what did Lila play here okay a5 so trying to distract if bishop takes the bishop which which is played the bishop is distracted from e3 which might mean f4 is more effectual or a, an e3 later so bishop takes was played distracting away from the e3 square if queen a3 then rook fb8 and f4 is actually quite good here blacks are doing very well there that's very nice and if queen b5 this position uh, black can still seem to uh, go for it on the king side for example like this with f4 and a vicious attack brewing up yeah it looks pretty vicious scenarios basically uh, so bishop takes a5 queen g5 and again this seems as though white's got this expedition of these pieces but really it doesn't help the king bishop b6 and now d5 is even possible black should avoid rook a b8 tempting as it might be c7 and actually bishop a6 gives white a big advantage so that pawn is potentially in some variations a danger but in other aspects it's been a disaster so far so d5 queen b3 we have rook a b8 on f4 this does, does actually tactically try and dissuade f4 which wasn't played perhaps because of knight takes e4 and that loose piece the thing is even here black's doing okay actually even in this line black's winning uh, if 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 there's a queen set there this is not convincing uh yeah there's nasty you know pin lines as well so okay rook a b8 was played not f4 and we have knight a4 now f4 here knight c5 bishop h3 king h1 and now e3 it seems the flooding has started on this side of the board in response to that c6 so both sides have used their majority to try and you know get a runaway pawn or a breakthrough of some sort actually it turns out here black's position is so strong that f3 is mega dangerous as well form pawn uh, for example like this that's pretty desperate if white has to sack a piece 
Uh, if Bishop a6 is another example, it's actually uh, interesting that knight f4 is mating here. Uh, if c7, knight h3 check and mate, and also if h4, can you guess what black plays in this position? It seems as though h4 gives h2 for knight h3. But actually there's a really nice crushing move for the record here. Can you guess? What does black play here? Okay, five seconds. What's the most crushing move? Okay, queen takes h4. Give yourself 100 points if you saw that. Because that rips open this diagonal. So after g takes, knight h3 is checkmate again. Okay, so very interesting stuff. So both e3 and f3 at this point seem quite promising for black indeed. So e3, rook f1. F3, so both of them, why not have both? Bishop takes, this is totally desperate already, of course. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, it shows neglect of the king side this game. Queen f5, c7. That pawn is too little, too late. Just rook c8. Black has huge threats, and white desperately just played knight e6, just giving up a piece, seems for nothing. Uh, but black's crashing through, whatever happens. So, say, this move, uh, well, any move, like rook fc1, e takes, crashing through with f1. The pawn's not really going anywhere still. So yes, the game ended here. So what disaster. In fact, rook takes f2 could be stronger than taking the knight. Uh, in fact, much stronger because the rook is, is loose as well, potentially. So take away uh, the pressure from the queen. And leaving this position with f1 threatened is the way to go. And now taking on e6. So that would be a great way to continue from the game end position. Massive material up. So yes, um, a crushing game. And it shows that even in that classic line uh, with the c5, it seems as though it's really dangerous on the king's side. Maybe this is one of the points that uh, Karana's kind of innovation with a4 maybe highlights that he wasn't really convinced with c4, the old classic move at move 7, uh, to get that queenside pawn majority. It seems as though black's just having a, a field day on the king's side, a lot of fun, a playground on the king's side to play with, with the pawn majority over there. And the use of the e5 square and the menace of f4 and e4 later. It just seems too much for white to bear. So I thought that's quite an instructive game in Sveshnikov. If you want to check out some key core lines, there's now a, a short and sweet course at Chasuble, Fight Like Magnus. Uh, so Kings Crusher TV slash Magnus, you might want to check out and train. I think the Sicilian Sveshnikov is really a formidable weapon of choice. And uh, I'll try and check out some other key lines like the Rosalimo soon. So just to get more equipment if you did want to play this opening with black. Okay, thanks very much.